Hey folks, tip of the day. Today we're gonna to talk about a couple things uh, that are pretty important for a couple on a wedding day. First look or no first look. That's always a question that couples ask and there's a lot of different viewpoints on whether to have one or not. Just real quick, it's an individual decision. Don't let the planner or the photographer pressure you into making that decision. You ultimately make that decision on your own. But with that said, there are pros and cons to doing a first look or not. The cons of doing a first look is typically the first look ends up being in the middle of the day, which is typically not the best time to take photos. And if you're at a venue that doesn't offer shade or doesn't offer um, even lighting that's not in, underneath the harsh sun in the middle of the day, particularly in the summer here in Tennessee, which could be upwards of high 90s into 100 degree weather, um, you want to be considerate of the weather, the temperature, the sun, the sunset that day of your wedding and make the determination. Now, with that said, you can still do a first look. You can still have your first look. You can still do the first look, maybe accomplish some other things with photography in terms of, you know, photographing the wedding party and um, maybe some family photos if people are present and, and available and fully dressed in their wedding gear. Um, you can do those things before guests arrive, and that usually is a great option. Uh, but I don't typically recommend doing all of your portraits during first look, only because the lighting is not the best. It's not uh, optimal. It's not something that uh, you want to spend all of your time doing pictures in. Uh, unless you're in you know, a city and there's high rises and you have shade and there's different places you can go, and you're not just in full sun all the time, then it might work. But if you're, you know, out in the open in a barn field, a uh, farm field, or you're, you know, in an open area and there's not much in terms of shade, you definitely want to reconsider doing all of your pictures at the time. Now, what's the alternative? What can you do if you're not doing all of your photos before your ceremony during a first look? Well, you can do what I call a breakout session. So you can do that either during your cocktail hour or for the couples that want to be present or for the couples that are doing a first look so that they can spend time with their guests during cocktail hour, you can do it closer to sunset. So you can pre-plan time for you to break away from the reception. And again, typically if a photographer is efficient and knows what they're doing, they typically only need 15 or 20 minutes to accomplish some amazing photos at a venue if they have good weather. So. Um, you know, 15 to 20 minutes planned time to break out of the reception with just the wedding couple to capture images at the venue, at the property in great light. That's all you need. So you still got to do your family photos during cocktail hour, but the rest of that time, which should be close to 40, 45 minutes if, if, if you're organized and you don't have an enormous family or a tremendous amount of groupings to do in photos, you should be able to get through family photos in 15 to 20 minutes. Now, that is all dependent on people being cooperative, people being present, and you being organized about what groupings you need people to be in for the photos. Um, so that's all something that you know can be prearranged ahead of time to make sure that that part of your day goes smoothly. Uh, so that's one of the major cons about doing a first look is that typically it's not the best time of the day to do pictures. So. Uh, you can still do it. You can still get some amazing first looks, but I always recommend to have that breakout session. Now, if you choose not to have a first look, totally fine. Um, most of those weddings, you're doing photos during cocktail hour, and that's, that's, a, that's a great option too, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but just bear in mind that an hour for cocktail typically is never an hour for cocktail hour. I mean, you end up spending a lot of time you know, getting family arranged and getting them in place to do those pictures and then organizing bridal party members to get those done as quickly as possible. And if you're lucky, you end up with 20 or 30 minutes left during that cocktail hour to take pictures of the wedding couple. But that doesn't always happen. Um, unfortunately, things run over, timelines bend because of other various reasons. And the other downside of doing photos during cocktail or all your photos during cocktail hour is if things are delayed uh, at no fault of the photographer, say other things were delayed, and now you have less time to take pictures, and say you wanna just extend it a little bit and just have your guests continue to enjoy cocktail hour, typically that's not an option. 
Sometimes food is ready to go. It's ready to come out, ready to be served. They don't want it to get cold. So there's a lot of pressure on photographers to be done on time. So if six o'clock is the start of your reception time, they expect you to be lined up and ready to be intro because the meals are coming. So just another thing to keep in mind. So sometimes there's not flexibility on the back end of a cocktail hour. So that's why even when you don't do a first look, I always recommend a breakout sunset session because it, it's stress-free, it's just the couple, and it's in good light, and that is always a great way to tackle your wedding day. So that's my recommendation on first looks. Whether you go with them or not, personal decision you make, but there are pros and cons, and it's important to understand both sides of the coin in terms of photography. And if a photographer's telling you like, yeah, they love first looks, they do, they're awesome, they're amazing to catch the emotion in the moment, but doing all of your portraits at 12 noon in Tennessee, not a good idea. Uh, not good light. <laughs> I don't care what anyone tells you. It's not good light. Um, so that's my recommendation. Hope it helps. Hope it, it dispels a lot of the things that you uh, are thinking about as you're planning your timeline and trying to figure out when's the best time to do things. So um, I give all my couples a wedding timeline guide and hopefully that's helpful for a lot of them and it explains a lot of what I just explained in this video. But for the ones that uh, are still in the planning process or haven't booked me or just finding this video, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, for the wedding photographers watching this, hope it was helpful to help you plan your kind of itinerary and how you're working with couples. And if it's helpful, then great, I appreciate it. So please like, subscribe, follow down below and uh, show your appreciation so I can continue to do these videos. I appreciate you stopping by and uh, I welcome all comments down below. I try to get to them and answer them and read them when I see them. Thank you so much. Catch you at the next video. Later.